In the first part of this video, I'm going to take you inside the LeConte Center. This is the big convention center in downtown Pigeon Forge where the official rod run is held. And we're going to take a look at some of the awesome show cars on display inside the LeConte Center. In the second part of this video, we'll go down to the strip, take a look at some of the fine rides there on the strip. Some of them are cruising town, some of them are just parked there, some of them are for sale. Some folks just drive their car uh, into the Smokies for the weekend just to be part of the atmosphere and kind of take part in the show in their own way. There will be probably about a couple hundred cars displayed inside the LeConte Center and just outside but down on the strip there are many many thousands more and uh, this is a huge event for pigeon forge coming right up here is my favorite car inside the building this is a 1940 ford deluxe street rod the color is just phenomenal on this car and it is super clean small block chevy under the hood and i love the wheel and tire combo on this car but my favorite thing about it is the hidden door handles right there inside the trim you could barely see them in there the interior is just gorgeous on this car and the fit and finish is just incredible it's got those beautiful chevron tail lights on it as I was approaching this 1959 Ford Skyliner, it occurred to me that it looked like a creamsicle from when I was a kid <laughs> with that orange and white. And indeed, as I walked around the front of the car, I saw that the name of the car was the Dreamsicle. This would also be an appropriate car if you were a big UT Vols fan because that's their colors. Here is a, another favorite from the show today. And although this says it's a 1937 Ford, I sincerely doubt that there's anything that's 1937 Ford about it. I imagine this is a body from Downs Fiberglass or Minotti maybe, very reminiscent of the Smoothster that Boyd Coddington built years ago. And uh, this is a very nice example of a street rod. I had to take a cruise through this vendor right here. They had all these cool characters on display that you could buy and display in your man cave along with your hot rod or your collector car. And they even had a few gas pumps over here on the end. This guy looks like he's having a nervous breakdown. This big old land yacht of a Cadillac is another of my favorites here in the LeConte Center today in Pigeon Forge. I cannot even imagine the amount of hours that went into the bodywork on this big old boat. You'd have to do the block sanding with a two before on this thing, I imagine. But the end result is spectacular. It looks incredible under the lights here at the show. As I was walking up to shoot a little video of this Challenger, you'll notice the gentleman to the right hand side walking up with a flashlight. He is one of the judges here at the show today, and he has the unenviable task of grading these cars. I cannot even imagine trying to differentiate between these because all of these cars are just as perfect as they can be or as close as humanly possible. Right here, I've found a 1957 Chevy Bel Air set up as a gasser. I don't know if this thing was originally campaigned somewhere in this configuration or if it was, uh, you know, kind of a concept someone had and just brought to life. But either way, it's pretty cool. Right here is one of the coolest and funnest things that I found today here at the Rod Run. These are custom hand-built dioramas. And this one is of a diner. That one's of a Sinclair gas station. We got back here a Texaco service station right here. 
And right here's the gentleman that makes them. What's your name, sir? Darwin Hunkler. Good to meet you, Darwin. You call me Doc. Doc. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about these. About how many hours do you have in building well, one of these? I don't know about the hours, but it takes me about six months to build one. Like about that. six months. Yeah. Those are very cool. How many have you built? Uh, that there, I think four. About four. About four of them. Yeah, I think not one left. There. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you for letting us take a look. Hey, no problem. This has been one of my favorite things that I've found so far at the Rod Run. This is a little 1927 Model T Roadster, and it is severely hammered. <laughs> this thing is not much more than a go-kart, but I just love all the details on this thing. Looks like it's got an early Ford Banjo rear end in it. I like that gas tank and the way it's mounted. I'm not at all sure I could even get in and out of this thing, but it is super cool. Got a flathead in it with a couple of two barrel carburetors on it. Very cool little car. This has been one of my favorite things that I've found so far at the Rod Run. This is a 1960 Rambler station wagon. And what do you get if you cross that with an 07 Mustang? Well, you get the Ramstang. And right here is the owner and builder of it. Tell us a little bit about your ride here. 1960 Rambler wagon on top of a uh, 2007 Mustang unibody. Uh, we stretched the rear end of the unibody nine and a half inches to get the, the proper adjustment for the wheel. Uh -huh. And then uh, we had to stretch the front fenders in the hood six and a half inches to do that and then after that problem was solved we figured we had to take the control arms in three inches on each side yeah. so we brought the control arms to get in. the track width and right then when top of that then we had to take the tie rods in so tell me something how did you come across this crazy idea one of the guys that worked with me he just said one day you know we need to do something with that car and we just pretty roached out yeah, underneath that was bad it was terrible underneath yeah so but being the Mustang was a unibody and this was a unibody, it fit pretty well. The dash fitted it perfect and we worked around that. So. so let's look under the hood right here just a little bit and you can see every bit of it is 07 Mustang. Very cool. Yeah. And all the underneath right there and even the dash and the interior is from the donor. <laughs> this thing is just too cool. Love the color on it. It's got the old school Krager SS wheels on it. And if you see right there in the sun, just a little glint of pearl in that paint. I just love this car. I'm not much of a four wheel drive guy, but I am really liking this Chevy Silverado. Can't help but think about the old TV series, The Fall Guy, when I see one jacked up like that. I heard something rumbling in over here. Sounds pretty cool. <laughs> I've got to check this out. Hey, Sounds Doug. good, don't it? Much water racket, don't yeah, it? That's what it's supposed to Well, I saw one of these driving down the road the other day, but this is the first one that I've seen in person. And it's just as disappointing in person as it is <laughs> looking at it online. There just is no telling what you'll see here at the Rod Run in Pigeon Forge, including this little bit of redneckery right here. <laughs> it even has a belly mower under it right there. You got a winch mounted up there underneath. <laughs> this is pretty cool. So the winch I see holds up the belly mower. I can't imagine what the neighbors would think if I brought that home to do the mowing. <laughs> Hi, 
if you uh, lived in an area that you had a lot of problem with the HOA, <laughs> this would be a fun thing to buy and put up on the top of your house. <laughs> 22.5 for this old Dodge pickup. And it has a utility bed on the back. I really dig this. Rather stock looking, but I bet it's modernized underneath. Here's a 348, a three deuce, 58 Chevy, white on red, for sale, but I do not know the price. Y'all, I am in love with this 1960 Chevy Bel Air. What a sweet cruiser. Let's go around here and see what the specs are on this thing. Super straight too. 35700 R4. Power disc brakes, power steering, air conditioning, Dakota Digital, and the list goes on. 75K. What a beautiful car. Hands down the coolest hauler I've seen up here this weekend. This is an international load star. Check out that wedge bed. And he's hauling a cool old Ford bump side. Man, this thing is killer. And it's a crew cab, so you can haul all your buddies with you. this old box truck from way up on the strip sitting back here in the parking lot I had to come take a look at this <laughs> looks like an old dairy truck in fact they got a couple of milk cans back here in the back this is a GMC I'm not sure what the chassis is but it is really cool looks like they're getting a little bit of pin striping work done Here is a gray old 55 and a half patina Chevy. One thing particular though, check out his uh, leg lamp right there on the dash. <laughs> Buy you a truck there, son. You'd look good driving that. I've got one. All right. There is a ton of just gnarly old patina pickups up here this year. I love this 46. It has got just the right look. I used to have one of these. Man, I kind of regret selling it. They've got the fold up um, hood opens right there by that handle. It folds up in the center right there, just like a Model A. Very cool trucks. One of these days, I would love to buy one of these old canned hams and just uh, camp my way across the United States. Yeah. 
Here's a couple more old vintage campers. That one looks like it's sold. And then we've got another one right over here. The Smokies would be a great place to camp. This one's kind of unique with the uh, bump up right there in it. I think this one is a Scotty. And I think the door's open in this one, yeah. There's a hot rod. Here is a super clean little Chevy S10. It's advertised as having 36,000 actual miles and it is priced at 17.5. It has a 4.3 V6 and auto. A lot of people might scoff at the price but where are you going to find another one this clean this straight with that low of a mileage on it it is practically a brand new truck and i would absolutely buy this over a brand new one any day of the week there's several uh, really nice trucks parked right here together i'm digging this silverado two-ton gorgeous truck and over here we got a um, C10 and an OBS really nice patina truck right here got some big inch rims on it and it's slammed down nice now I think this is a 61 62 maybe nice red OBS over here these things are coming on strong in value and another Silverado back here. This one is patinaed. Very nice survivor finish on it. It must be truck day up here at the Ron Run. <laughs> Lots of really nice trucks here. This is atypical for the paint scheme of the 70s. I love this dent side Ford. Man, here is one ugly truck. I'm allowed to say that because I have one of these. <laughs> this is about a 46-ish Studebaker. 47, I see right there. Sitting on an S10 frame. Very unique trucks. And a lot of people don't know this, but uh, the right rear fender will interchange with the right front fender. So they only had um, two molds for fenders, right and left. Same with the running boards. These running boards will swap from side to side. Again, they only had one stamping for running boards. And they only had one stamping for headlights they will also swap from side to side here is a 1953 Packard and to me this has been one of the best deals I've seen up here this weekend only 17.5 and it has a really really nice paint job on it rather original looking aside from the engine and I'm sure the transmission but it is a beautiful car. That would make a killer family cruiser. Probably one of the most radical cars that I've seen up here this weekend. This is a 1934 Oldsmobile. Man, it has got some heavy purple flake in there. And 
and I am getting too old for a car like that because I don't think I could even get down in that thing. I'm an old truck guy of just about every flavor. I particularly like this International up here this weekend. I've not seen a ton of Volkswagens up here this weekend, but this one is a really nice 62. I like the roof rack on it right there. And it's got a lot of little custom touches on it. It's lowered nicely. Nice set of wheels. $9,000 or best offer. Now, I would say that uh, this is a really nice entry level car for somebody that's trying to get into the classic car hobby. Come about sundown tonight, this would be the ride to hit the strip on. And you could cruise around with Elvis himself right there. <laughs> I'm seeing more and more and more of these little Japanese mini trucks around. I dig these things. <laughs> this one. It's really cool. It's got a fifth wheel back here in the back and a trailer. And back here on the trailer is a little Honda minivan. These suckers are all uh, right hand drive and these are all wheel drive, all time all wheel drive. So you can buy this whole fleet right here for $25,000, all three pieces truck trailer and the van and that folks is precisely where the battery on my camera died and I forgot to bring my bag up we logged about 10 miles that day this was the Thursday of the show and just as it was getting ramped up it just gets bigger and bigger on Friday and Saturday traffic gets heavier and heavier uh, we logged about 10 miles of walking that day and we cut out of there before all the traffic and the cruising got started and if you don't know this this show has a little bit of a reputation to get a little rowdy at night so we wanted to avoid all the traffic and the rowdiness and stuff so we just went ahead and cut out of there uh, in spite we in spite of that we still got uh, to see a lot of cool cars and and see a lot of cool things and I got some good food, had a great time. Uh, in the absence of Shades of the Past, I may have to put this show in my regular um, car show lineup for the year. So I don't know, it happens uh, twice a year, April and September. So if you're ever in the area, you might wanna check it out. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up, like, and subscribe. And until next time, Y'all get out there and build something.